Um, this is a story that we just sat, I think, staring at each other for a little while when we heard it. It is one of the most remarkable things you're going to hear all day. A brand new book has dominated the news sites as the most read and most shared article of this week. It's called Out of the Box, The Highs and Lows of a Champion Smuggler, including the story of a man who posted himself to Australia. And to join us on the show to talk about this very story, one of the co-authors of the book, Mr. Marcus McSorley. Good morning, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good, good evening for me. You're just teasing there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in the UK at the moment. Is that where you live? I'm actually in Spain. It's... Uh... Uh, I normally live in London. Well, it was your dad who actually made the box that Reg Spears jumped in to mail himself from London to Perth. Is this a story that intrigued you ever since you were a little boy? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it, I still remember as a as a little boy um, getting dad to tell the box story over and over again. I, I never got sick of hearing it and uh, used to love watching the various reactions of our dinner guests around the, around the table as their jaw dropped. Tell us from the very beginning how someone came to post themselves from London to Australia. Obviously it wouldn't happen to uh, to just anybody. Reg Spears is a, <laughs> is a, is a fairly sort of a eccentric character, great guy and a great, great family friend he was uh, he was an australian javelin thrower and uh, he, he met my father in the uh, 1962 commonwealth games and basically he had made his way to england and he was looking to uh, compete at the tokyo olympics which were which were that year um, but unfortunately uh, he, he he got injured in england and uh, he was desperate to get back home to australia to his his wife and, and little girl but he, he didn't have the money. He'd had his wallet stolen, which had all his savings in it. So basically, uh, he and my father hatched this this mad scheme whereby Dad would build him a, a wooden box and that they would ship him back to Australia as air freight. Unbelievable. Now, we are talking about the early 60s, aren't we? Uh, that's correct. Yeah, we're talking 1964. He'd be hard pushed to do this today, but uh, it's very innovative. I'm sure you'll agree. What was your dad's reaction when Reg first sort of pitched this idea? Dad describes it as a regism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, they thought it was a, it was you know one of his, his crazy ideas, but there was, um, as, as he puts it, an intensity about it whereby they thought, this, this guy is serious. And um, he, he thought, look, if, if he's going to do it, I'd better build him a, a decent box because Dad was pretty good with his hands to make sure uh, he, he gets home safely. What kind of contingencies did he make with the building of this box and what did they put inside it to help him survive this, this trip? Firstly, yeah, the box was five feet by three feet by two and a half feet. It was long enough whereby he could um, sit up with his back straight or lie down with his, his legs spent. And there were straps put inside whereby he could, uh, you know, hold, hold on to and also be, strap himself down. Mm. Um, Smart thinking. They also <laughs> had to slow his system down because um, obviously uh, there's uh, no easy way to go to the toilet when you're, uh, when you're, when you're up in a plane. And uh, so he had one bottle for peeing and one bottle for drinking. And uh, he had he had one uh, one can of, now this is a bone of contention, uh, that my father always remembers it as being a can of spaghetti bolognese, but uh, Reg is adamant that it was baked beans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so just the one can so of food? Just the one can of food. Marcus, can we get you to hold the line for us? We're going to go and take a quick break. And when we come back, we want to hear a little bit more about the journey because safe to say things didn't go to plan. Uh, they certainly didn't. 7.48. Now, if you've just tuned in, well done to you because we're in the middle of hearing the amazing story of a man who was mailed from London to Australia. We're actually talking to the author of the book, Out of the Box, Highs and Lows of a Champion Sp Smuggler, Marcus McSorley, whose father helped the Australian javelin thrower Reg Spears mail himself. Now, Marcus, tell us what happened when he got inside the box and, and was actually loaded onto the plane. Um, they'd anticipated that the flight would probably be somewhere in the region of, you know, 30 to 30. 35 hours but as it happened the fog came down and uh, he was he was delayed for the first 24 hours because of fog so he he sat in the warehouse for the first 24 hours in this box and this rookie forklift truck driver that was loading him onto the plane and um, uh, basically uh, it jolted and, and almost almost dropped him and he suffered a pretty large impact um, in there. So that, that was quite a frightening experience as much as uh, Reg probably wouldn't admit. <laughs> I suppose, too, he needed some 
clothes or something because it, I imagine it would have been quite cold and I know these days you couldn't do it because it's a very, very cold journey. People, you hear of them dying trying to smuggle themselves in the cargo holds of planes, but it wasn't the case back then. Reg, funnily enough, actually worked at the airport before actually embarking on his journey and he had seen a number of animals that had been passed through. So the, he, he knew that it was possible um, beforehand and, uh, and that was sort of one of the things that I think, you know, sp- sparked the idea, obviously seeing animals going through it. He, he knew it could knew it could be done. It's an amazing story, Marcus. I mean, obviously he did make the journey safely. He arrives in Perth. Can you just tell everyone how he actually made it out of the airport, undetected? He pretty much sort of got, got out of the box, um, put on his suit, and uh, joined on the line of, of a load of other passengers that were, <laughs> were coming off the plane and walk, walked out of the air, airport. That was it. Easy as pie. It's, um, it's so unimaginable now knowing the heavy security and all of that sort of thing. Just the idea of jumping out of a box, out of a shed somewhere off in the distance and joining the queue of some passengers that are, are waltzing through the airport. I know. I mean, to be honest, it wouldn't even cross most people's minds back then, but for Reg Spears, uh, he's a pretty unique character. This is only the beginning of it. I mean, that's a phenomenal story and of course Reg Spears has gone on to live a phenomenal life including the fact that he was sentenced to death in Sri Lanka as a Frenchman. I mean (laughs) there's so many amazing facets to him. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean the guy, is he sort of had nine lives. The things that he's sort of gone through and come out the other end to tell the tale it really is quite remarkable. Well that's exactly what you've done, outlining this incredible man, Reg Spears, the Australian that posted himself from London successfully to Australia. If you'd like to get your hands on it, out of the box the highs and lows of a champion smuggler. Marcus, thank you so much for telling this story to us. It's been fascinating. No, thank you. It's my pleasure and uh, thank you for having me on. Take care.